Welcome to the Wise Guides Enrolled Agent Review Course. My name is Arthur Reed and I'm going to be your instructor through all three parts of this exam. Uh, just to let you know, I've been an instructor for a number of years in the EA area. It's an area that I really enjoy because it gets me to the point where I can share with you part of that journey that you take to become an enrolled agent. My guess would be that more often than once you've gone through and maybe jotted down your name with the word EA afterwards, enrolled agent perhaps, maybe worked on designing a website that says, you know, Jane McLaughlin enrolled to practice before the IRS, or some sort of designation that sets you apart from the other practitioners. I'm going to work through some of my favorite topics, some of the topics that I never really see until I teach this area, because they're not part of my practice, but they are part of your exam. And we'll also be working throughout this course a number of questions. Let me talk a little bit more about that. But if you're watching this right now, which of course you are, because you'd have to be, because that's why you're seeing me, you could be preparing for either part one, of the special enrollment exam that deals with individuals, or you could be preparing for part two or for part three. All of these segments, whether they be individuals, businesses, or in the area of representation, practice, and procedure, have the same introduction because we want to talk about the exam. You don't have to take these in order, so you may be starting with part three, for example, as opposed to part one. If you have already heard me do this once, you don't have to listen to me again, but it's here for you just to go back and review some of the components about the exam as a, as a as a whole. Uh, as far as an overview goes, I want to talk to you about the exam. It's a three and a half hour test. Uh, that's a long time, but if you think that three and a half hours is a, just over, say, 200 minutes from a time stand, and you're going to have 100 multiple choice questions that you're going to work through, you know, that's a couple minutes per question, so it's probably not that bad. Um, the, we have candidates that go right up to three and a half hours and some that leave early. But it's also based upon the nature of the questions. If you know stuff, you move ahead. If not, you may want to come back and visit that later. Of the questions that you take, which are the 100, 85 of them are graded. That means that only 15 of them are going to be like what they call experimental questions. And those experimental questions have different formats as well, as well as all the other questions. We use three different types of multiple choice questions. Uh, there are sometimes a direct question, there is sometimes an incomplete sentence, and sometimes all of the following except. And I almost, truly, I, I oftentimes find all of the following except to be the hardest one because sometimes they're basically a double negative. Um, all questions have an equal value. The only reason I mention this is that you could find old enrolled agent exams which had multiple choice questions that were computational, that were um, uh, theory-based, which had words, or they had true-false questions, which I use some of them still on my slides, that only had like points of like one value or up to two or three points. So they had different values in there. These are all the same because they're all multiple choice questions. The passing score is kind of crazy. Uh, the passing score is 105 out of a range from 40 to 130. And while that is like weird, because that's like a 70-ish in terms of where you should be scoring in order to pass this thing, when you pass, you only get a statement that says you passed the exam. It doesn't tell you what your score is. So it's like, so how well did I did? You passed. So you know, that, that'll come up on the screen so you'll know that after you sit for the exam. Uh, in addition, I mentioned before that there'll be 15 experimental questions and uh, they will not count towards your overall grade. So as I go through and look at this, I'm going to be telling you what the, the exam count is, uh, just to give you some idea of where the questions will be in terms of what, you know, um, how many per topic, for example. And I'll do that before every session. So the first question I'm going to look at is what they refer. This is their sample question, by the way. I didn't create these. So this is right out of their booklet, which we'll get to in a minute. Which of the following entities are required uh, to file a Form 709, which is the gift tax return. And so we've got three ones. This being a direct question is simply going to be what is the right answer is another way of looking at it. I know that an individual needs to do that, but a trust and a corporation, they don't file it. This is for an individual. And so if I'm answering this in, in terms of being a direct question, uh, the answer would be A, an individual. Is that pretty easy? Okay. So that's an example of that. Supplemental wages are compensation. So keywords that we look for are like compensation, so that would be income, in addition to their wages. They do not. So this type of problem that we have is called uh, basically an incomplete sentence, not because of the do not, but it's sort of like payments for, you know, fill in the blank type of thing. And so what we're looking at is that 
something that is not, because not's a tough ones to go through. So accumulated sick pay is income. Non-deductible moving expenses that you get reimbursed for is income as well. And vacation pay, of course, is income as well. But if you get travel reimbursements that are paid according to the government's standard per diem rate, then that's not considered to be income to you. So that's an example of like, here's the sentence, finish it. Okay, that's your incomplete sentence. And the third one is all of the following except, so which of the following is not a requirement. So this is similar to what we had in, in the last one in terms of having that negative statement there, but they're dealing with what are the, what there are five tests. Now this is not quite exactly the way the law reads, but they haven't changed it, but I have to use, I want to use their candidate bulletin in here. Um, and we'll be talking about that in our first section that we look at. But your citizen or resident test is there, member of a household test is there, and I'll let you know a joint return test is also there, but what is not a test is the disability test. And so using this type of a format, we're basically taking a look at all of the following except. So they're sometimes hard to go through, and so what we're doing is we're sometimes testing logic as opposed to simply what the tax law is. If I rewrote this, it would like, which of the following, and so you can redo it to say, is allowed, and you can say, oh, citizen, yeah, this is, yeah. So those would be positive statements, okay? So just to give you that type of feel for what the exam looks like. Let me talk about our approach. So as we go through and prepare the material for you, you'll be getting a lot of information from us. I will start with an overview to an area. And when I do that, I want to tell you about what the examiners are thinking, what their content outlines are looking like, what are some of the things that we're going to be covering during this time together. So you'll have kind of a scope of it. Folks, this is on all of the tax law dealing with individuals, dealing with businesses, dealing with IRS practice procedure and other matters. There's a ton of material, and if I went through every possible thing on here, it'd be like absolutely crazy. For the fact that you're gonna have 100 questions, of which only 85 are gonna count, I've really gotta scope this thing down. So I'm gonna give you an overview, and I'll cover as much as I can that I think will be more testable than other areas, but you'll have a lot of resources to go through. Um, that includes exam content, the coverage, we'll see those things in the specifications. I have slides for all of those so that you don't have to go back to the Prometric Bulletin, which I'll talk about in a second. You've got all that information right in front of you. I'm gonna do a concise lecture on, top, on each topic. Um, I have selected the key topics as we go through. When I say concise, I sometimes talk too long, um, but it's, it's like I feel that I have to say these things as we go through certain areas. Um, I will also have PowerPoint of the key issues so that you'll have your printouts of those that you can follow along with, add some extra notes as you go through and the resources. Uh, those things become important as study guides. So after you review it with me, if you wanna go back and review your notes again, you've got all that information there. As appropriate, I'm gonna display the various forms where this information would go. So I'm a visual learner. I like to hear things because I find you know, people that talk to be very interesting. But at the same time, it's like I wish I had something so I can see. So where does that go? Where appropriate? I'm going to show you that on the various forms. I'll also refer to different types of publications. Uh, sometimes an instruction will help me go through those areas. The reason I cover the publications is that the IRS wants you to look at publications as well. I'm going to work selected questions. And through the selected questions that I'm going to go through, what I've done is I've culled through past EA exams. I have put those questions up. I've updated them for current law. And at at the same time, when I went through and, and did that, I had to write a few because we had the Tax Cut and Jobs Act. So we had to populate with a few extra questions, but we're trying to keep them in the same type of feel. When we're done with each part, we'll have worked over 100 questions in each area. Your exam's 100. I, I, you know, I call this my playlist of questions that I like to see that will test specific areas um, that I think you're gonna see on the exam, but that doesn't mean that that's what's gonna be on there. We don't know specifically, we just have the content area. But we do know we have a lot of great candidates that sit and pass the exam, and that's like awesome, and you're gonna be one of them as well. I will also have up on the screen some true-false questions. I like true-false questions because they get right to the point. Here's a fact, true or false. And it makes you think during the videos as we go through as, as opposed to being able to, I don't want to ever say anyone is sleeping through a video, but it's like, hey, let's stay engaged. Let's try this question. Let's try this question. Let's try this question. As far as the material that we're looking at, the testing window that you're walking into for the 2019 year goes from May 1st through 
February 28th of 2021. So that's is when it'll be opening. I don't know when you're listening to this, but that's the window that we're, we're looking at for that material. Um, the 2019 material is basically supposed to be for any tax law that's in place for the 2019 year. But as we have seen some pre-release questions and things like that, some of the times they're saying for the 2018 year, it's like, what? because something changed in 2019. So sometimes there's a little deference back to that other period. And I hope that there's no prospective questions because there has been uh, the SECURE Act, I'll talk a little bit about that when we get to those areas, that are really for provisions that take place in the 2020 year, which is the year that we're filming this in, but it's not the year that you're gonna be tested in. So we have different parts there. Uh, the fee is $182 per, per, uh, per part, and you'll have three parts, and you don't have to pay them all at once because you only sit for one part uh, at a time. I'm gonna go quickly to the Prometric website. It's the IRS website, which is connected with Prometric. Prometric is your testing center uh, that you'll go to. It gives you information, and let me just give you this component right here, opening words. Uh, this is you. An enrolled agent is a tax professional who has demonstrated competence in tax preparation and representation matters. Enrolled agents generally have unlimited practice rights, meaning they can represent any taxpayer regarding any tax matter before any IRS office. That's, that's way cool. That's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to get you to the point where you've got clients and you can represent them. One of the things that I enjoyed about having my representation rights is that I can work with my clients that are being audited as well as other ones that call me up saying, I have an audit, can you help me? I need to go to appeals, can you help me out? And being a CPA, I can help them do those because I have those credentials that allow me to practice. As an EA, you'll have those credentials as well. Included in here um, is a information from a candidate bulletin, um, but one of the areas that has changed, and I just want to bring this to your attention right now because I thought it was kind of interesting, um, is that while three and a half hours is a long time for everybody, uh, you can, if that you have a three and a half hour clock, while you take the exam, if you need to use the restrooms, the clock keeps running. So what they did is they changed the policy a little bit that says after you have completed, and this is the part that I thought was, was interesting, is that after you have completed, how did I miss that, um, 50 questions, once you've answered 50 questions, questions one through 50, okay, you get a timeout, automatic 15 minute timeout, so you can do whatever you want. So once you have answered questions one through 50, so I, I'm assuming that when you hit question 50, that's when the timeout comes. So if you bounce, you can actually move throughout the exam, but just to let you know, you know, that's an automatic that you get. So it, the clock stops. So, so why am I talking about bathroom breaks? It's just something that we have to do sometimes. You know, but that's new, all right? Uh, let me also go back then and just show you the candidate bulletin. Uh, the candidate bulletin is something you need to read. Um, I'm not gonna take time to read through it, uh, but it's for the current year. It just came out, and because I'm just taping this just as it came out. And all this information, as far as the contents go, talk about um, scheduling the exam, preparing for your exam, taking your exam, and then over on this side, all the content specifications, which I'll be covering as we go by topic by topic. All right, so that's like a pretty cool area. Uh, let me go back to this here. So what I'd ask you to do is that at a very near point, register, get the time slot that you want. You probably have the dates that you plan on sitting for the exam. Um, go through the Prometric website. That's basically the site that I was on. I just want you to be able to see the link that I clicked on. There's also included in there a sample tutorial that if you work through that, um, it'll help you get familiar with the, the style and the pace. They also have sample exams. Um, for exam questions in there, where they also cite various sources that they use to answer those specific questions. I will periodically look at some of those sample questions as we go through the course. So let me welcome you, and um, I know you're gonna do well. I know we're covering a lot of material, and I know you'll become an enrolled agent. So um, let's start. <laughs>